This morning, to start us off on the Gamify stage, we've got Cinefy, um, and we've got K2 Romero, who is the company's um, CEO, and also Nasia Adamova, who's a BD at Cinefy. Yeah? Okay, well, what I'm going to ask you to do is, you can introduce the rest of you, if you like, just stick the mics on. Do you need a mic? I have one. Has everyone got a mic? So okay, go for it. Here is also Anerson Roberto, co-founder and investor in Cinefy Group, and our colleague, head of China operations, Kema Baye. So I think, Katie, you can start and sure. uh, oh, yeah. introduce Cinefy and sure. tell our story, how we started. Okay, here we go. Oh, So to tell the story of Cinefy, first you have to tell the story of its people. And in order to understand that, we're going to deep dive a little bit into our team. So Cinefy is an important, hold on, can, we go, can I start over? She did? Okay, we're going to tell the story of Cinefy. And in order to tell the story of Cinefy, we have to tell the story of its people. So I have only been the CEO at Cinefy for two months. And in those two months, I have learned so much about this company. <laughs> Mainly how to use this. I come from the corporate world. My background is a little less interesting here on the Web3 platform. And what is interesting about that, it has taught me what the corporate world has taught me is how to know how to lead a team, to know how marketing is more important that, than a great product, because sometimes we have great products, but we don't have a great story behind those great products. And that is something that I have learned through my traditional background and something that has brought me into Web3. I started in Web3 a little over two and a half years ago when the uh, pandemic was just setting in. And it seemed like, I always say that everything happens for a reason, because it felt like the door of traditional work was kind of closing, but at the same time, another door was opening, and that was the Web3 world. I was called on to do a project for a very traditional blockchain, and it's kind of the traditional crypto story of how do we explain what this product is, how do we get it out to the world, we're a group of fantastic developers, yet no one understands what we're doing. A lesson that Web3 has taught me and the corporate world didn't teach me is that failure is the price of entry. After a six month dive with this project, learning about the team, learning about the product, learning about the tech, what I learned was that even if the product was great, and in the end, in this case, it wasn't, that after five years, if the team could not come together and get no investment, you probably never would. Enter Amir. China and Web3. Well, thank you very much, Katie. We are extremely pleased to have you as a CEO. Um, I spent most of my time in Shanghai back in 2015 when the ICO was a big deal. Seeing the opportunity in blockchain, crypto, and emerging DeFi, we were, as a team, were motivated to start something new. And during two years and a half, we helped dozens of projects access Chinese capital and we're able to raise more than $100 million. And as a matter of fact, not only we succeeded in helping them, but also decided to extend our operations in Japan and Korea. More than that, we started recruiting new people, and these new people extended our presence in Japan and Korea in Southeast Asia. And there is Kema Baya, who is a chief of East Asia, could tell a little bit more why she was hired as an intern and was able to achieve the milestones that we everybody know. Hi, everybody. In less than 12 months, I became head of East Asia in Cinefy. Uh, it was a long journey. It was a very delightful journey. And I was so 
su surprised by the fact how less people know about Asia and how less they know how to promote their project in Asia. I mean, China, Japan, and Korea. So here we are at a mission, emerging Asia markets, helping tech brands to break into Asia and localize their brands. <laughs> Okay, so I think an important piece of this that Amir didn't touch on is that when he started Cinefy, he kind of had two goals in mind. One was, as he mentioned, to use his knowledge of crypto in China and marry that together. And two was to bring more women into Web3 or into tech in general. Now, for a lot of people, that seems to be two interesting goals coming from a man. But the first one is obvious, open new markets. The second one isn't so obvious. And let's tell a little bit more about that story. So after about a year, Amir had made Cinefy a very successful company in terms of putting Asia Pacific marketing PR and venture capital on the map. But one thing he didn't really know was how to scale it in terms of leadership. So being a pragmatic and strategic thinker, he understood that failure becomes a, a strategic decision and decided to bring on more people to lead the team. You want to talk about women, power, and decentralized. OK. <laughs> so his mission was to bring on more women. As you can see, this is our, most of our core team, which is 90% women. One thing that we do know and that studies show is that women thrive better in a decentralized environment. So from my leadership, my idea was to take back, to bring back power and to give it to our, to our team rather than using it as a leader myself. Something that the Web 2 and Web 1 world has failed at and has been criticized by most people is that because of the hierarchical structure, women are not able, able to move to the top, something that does not happen in Web 3 as we're working on decentral teams. So with that, I'm going to continue to introduce more of the team and let them tell their story. Kemas told her story, now Nastia will tell her story. Um, Nastia is our COO, and she is a Capricorn. For those that do not look at astrology, you want a Capricorn leading your boat, leading your ship. She's a long-term thinker. She'll ask the questions no one wants to ask, sometimes the negative questions that need to be said in a setting. She is also a very strong character. She is Ukrainian. She has just come from a situation of war, and she is here today to lead our team and to also lead our clients and realizing their visions and their goals. So, Nastia. Thank you for this <laughs> very nice introduction, Katie. So, yeah, uh, telling my story and how I joined Cinefy Group, I was uh, actually stuck by Amir for half a year, asking me to join and convincing me with his best arguments. Because Web3 and blockchain was something super new, some very tech word. I couldn't get, and I didn't feel any substantial, uh, un, uh, like uh, meaningful things in it. I, I didn't feel that this can be really a big business, uh, but it changed. Uh, when I joined Cinefy, it was like the starting of pandemic. Uh, people were disconnected. People were hiding at home, like having no opportunity to talk to each other, having lost their jobs, like businesses were stuck. And, and this very crucial moment for lots of people, uh, I uh, decided to try this very immersive uh, technology, this very difficult and technical um, industry, and especially uh, where we are going to bring these companies to East Asia markets. That is like the most, like closest and the most, uh, it, like uh, con country with the most uh, closest economy and infrastructure. So it was a great challenge for me, but I am not afraid of challenges. And um, as you already know from introduction Katie made, I was born in Ukraine and we are now uh, challenging ourselves. Uh, uh, fighting against Russia invasion. So uh, we, we are very strong and we know how to deal with the uh, difficult situations. So 
uh, and like continue my story and like uh, how I like I heard about blockchain, of course, like but I didn't understand uh, that Ukrainian engineers and developers are so pioneering in this. Like they they are in the very beginning of its concept. They build like products and solutions that are pioneering right now, uh, like in blockchain industry. Uh, for example, such companies well known all over the world, like Trusty Wallet, uh, bought by Binance later, uh, or uh, companies such as Hacking that doing security audits and uh, making our life more secure <laughs> and transparent. Uh, like Rema Group, that was like one of the leaders of uh, uh, ICO industry in 2017. So these are companies built by Ukrainians, uh, Ukrainian engineers, and that has uh, achieved uh, uh, like great success on this market. Uh, the second thing I didn't get when I went to Web3 that is uh, the community has power. And this is something, such amazing thing that uh, we actually didn't realize before uh, because blockchain and decentralization brought uh, a numerous uh, advantages for those who are, has no voice. For example, unbanked people who has no ID and ha have no opportunity to actually be registered and bank and open account. And they are stuck in their life, having no opportunity to get more income. And like this financial inclusion, that is something like blockchain could bring to us. Another thing is the decentralization and opportunity to be uh, independent in this very difficult world. Now you know about the war in Ukraine, but did you realize that this uh, cryptocurrency opened the opportunities of crypto donations all over the world? And Ukrainian government and organization raised around $50 million uh, just within one week via cryptocurrency donations. This is like live, powerful organism, decentralized organism that actually support each other, that reacts so fast. Like, it's immersive experience you have never had before. And we are seeing how right now crypto save lives, real lives. I'm sure you're watching TV and news and you see these pictures of um, uh, <laughs> destroyed houses, uh, kids living in the bomb shelters for like weeks, uh, people who lost their like money, job, everything actually, uh, live in the country. But you don't know another thing that we are very strong and we are very proud of heroes who are fighting on the front and back offices of this war. And like crypto community that gave us opportunity to raise like this uh, money through donations, so supportive, and we feel it, and like, we feel support from all over the world. But like standing here, like in Dubai, I can say because I was evacuated from Kiev on the second day of war, and I do understand how, <laughs> what is this, <laughs> and how we can like even being here uh, in Dubai talking to this like amazing people around. Uh, I can, like myself, I can support my family financially in being independent, having my crypto wallet. I can uh, donate to my army and help heroes to fight. Uh, this is something that Web3 and cryptocurrency uh, make real. So, like, sorry for having this, like, emotional speech. I'm, I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure, like, uh, you know lots of these things. Uh, but coming back to Cinefy's story and sharing another amazing things that we are doing, Katie, can you continue? Yes. Thank you for your story, Nastia. We're just going to jump ahead. So to go deeper into the Cinefy story, as Nastia was saying, we are led by women. We're led by stories. We're led by people from all over the world. Kema, who is Russian, but was. 
it's okay. Um, but lived 10 years in China, speaks Chinese, also Korean. So we have a very global team. Web3 isn't only decentralized, it's global. And what we do know at Cinefy is that by having a very global team, that diversity breeds innovation. And we're not just talking about gender diversity, we're not talking just about race diversity, but we're talking about diversity of experiences and lives, of socioeconomic status, of being able to come to the table and have new voices and new experiences. At the center of everything is story. So storytelling is the most powerful way to put ideas into the world. Storytelling has also become a very big buzzword for PR these days. But what I can tell you after being in this industry for 20 years is that not everyone truly knows how to tell a story. And again, it goes back to not only being creative, but having experiences in life and being able to bring that to the table when creating that story. So at Cinefy, this is our model. First, we start with your story. We start and understand who you are, what you do, why you do it, and what that means to your product, to the world, and to marketing in general. Once you have this story, oops, what happened to our, my other slides? Oh. Once you have the story, we move, we move into creative. As Nastia said, we have a, big, a very big connection to the Ukraine. We have some of the best R&D and creative teams coming out of the Ukraine. They take that story and put images to it and bring it to life so people can connect on it, not only through words, but through the vision of it. What is a story and what is creative without tech? After all, we are in Web3. We then back that up with our incredible R&D team that, comes, that brings that story to life through solid technology that is gonna scale and be revolutionary and innovative in the market. And lastly, if we don't have money, we can't go anywhere. So Cinefy also has a VC arm that puts our own money in when we see the project is viable. At this point, we have about 60% of our portfolio has been, inv we've invested in our own projects. So of 2021, we were an agency with a VC arm. By 2022, we're going to be a VC with an agency arm, using story, creative, and tech to back up the, st the projects that we're investing in. So now that we've proven the model and we know how to do it and launch these things, we're putting our money where our mouth is and we're launching an all-woman NFT-led, all-female NFT-led company. And the first launch will be, or the first drop will be in June. Babs Labs, 51 years after John Lennon wrote, Power to the People, Web3 is bringing us to the brink of global economic a revolution, one that brings a fairer society with financial freedom and rebalanced power disparities to everyone has a seat at the table. The first drop, as we said, will be in June. We've named it Unsung Heroes. It's gonna be the number of pieces, 1,920 pieces. It's a symbolic date, the date, the year that women got the right to vote in the United States. This will be a completely art-led collection. It's not going to be like any other collection out there in the sense that it's not comic. It's gonna be layered. We're gonna have elements of, we have that in there? Oh, no. Or it's gonna have elements of AR, VR, and video. Um, Nastia, do you wanna add anything else to that about the collection? So idea, I, idea of the collection is to uh, reveal the unsung hero that has not be, never been recognized during their life. And each woman has own story. And we are going to share this story. And we are going to help brands to like be a part of this story. In a small pieces, we are going to create with the best artists, female artists. So like everything around this collection has a social impact. And we also want to uh, say that like, the, next, the next step is being to make collaborations. So if you are interested in working with us and collaborate, so feel free to join, uh, to ask, uh, like, to, to contact us via Telegram or email. We are sharing on the next slide. Thanks everyone for your time. <laughs>